my grandfather told me I was going to be a lawyer my whole life. And I really believed I was going to be a lawyer. I, he had a vision for me, and it seemed like a good one. He was a lawyer. He had a great life. But I loved, after being that, in that play, I was always in plays after that. I always looked at putting on a show. I always read books. I loved the arts. And what really changed was my senior year in college. I went to Wellesley. And they had a contest for the best short story. And I entered it because the prize was $500. And I was always broke. And I won the award, the Senior Writing Award. And it's funny, I told some kids that last week. And for the first time, a little girl said, what was, your, what was the story about? And no one's ever asked me that question. I've told people, I won the Senior Writing Award at Wellesley, and it changed my life because I sent my short story to my grandfather, and he said, don't go to law school for me. If you want to be a writer, you should be a writer. And I threw away my law school applications. But no one has ever said, what was the story? And the story was about, it was based on something that had happened to me, like my books. And it was about the fact that Back then, there weren't ATM machines. So if you wanted money for the weekend when you were in college, you had to walk to town to a bank, and you had to cash a check. This seems like horse and buggy time, but that's, that's how old I am. So every Thursday, because we would go into Boston on Friday, every Thursday we would go into town, and I would walk after a certain class, and I'd go to a bank, cash a check. I think it was for $15, but anyway. Um, and one day I went into town and there was a man and he was sitting in a lawn chair in the same building as the bank. And he was, I think now, I'm going to say in his 80s. And I started talking to him and he had been an antique dealer his whole life in Newport Beach. And, and not Newport Beach, in Newport, Rhode Island. And he had retired, but he was, didn't want to be at home anymore. So he had rented an office um, in this bank building. And he filled it with all the stuff he had never sold. And I love old things. And the truth is, I really appreciate older people. I think they have knowledge and experience and wisdom. And so I started coming every Thursday at a very specific time in order to meet him, to talk to him. And I always stayed and talked to him for about an hour. And after maybe six months, his name was Mr. Fishman, at the end of six months, I went to see him one Thursday and the office was locked and closed and he was gone. And I went the following Thursday and his wife was waiting for me and she told me that he had died and that she knew he had a standing appointment with a young girl who went to Wellesley who liked to listen to his stories. Um, and she gave me a necklace that I still have that she wanted me to have from him. So I wrote about that I have, I've always have older characters in my work because uh, a friend of mine just lost her father and she said it's like a library burned down, not just the library of their family, but this man was a really interesting artist and he knew a lot about art and she wants to know where that knowledge has gone. And I told her, well, it's gone to you and now you're going to pass it down. Um, in short, I have two characters who are in their 70s and their main characters. <laughs>